your boy Taker from he Heaven back with another video. And, um, well, that's it. Uh, <laughs> that was, that's the culmination of pretty much a year, uh, uh, send off. Uh, last ride, uh, various podcast interviews, um, ESPN. I mean, you know, uh, my camera's ass as hell, but, <laughs> but yo, uh, Taker uh, supposedly officially gone. Um, you know, I, I don't, it's hard to, so just, just a quick, like, let me try to, you know, sequence these thoughts in some kind of manner and try to relate it to, um, try to, I'm just reading my like, comments about it right now, try to relate it to the, uh, what happened. So I came in, I meant to watch the whole thing, but I just was busy with other stuff. So I came in uh, pretty much right as the, um, the, uh, Drew and, and, um, who even cares? Roman Reigns match, uh, ended, and, you know, that was whatever. Um, and it kind of give, you know, go to commercial break, and then dude comes out and says, you know, we're here to do the Taker send-off, um, kind of, you know, just normal con uh, announcer or whatever comes in and says that. And then they have guys come in. I, I don't remember who was the first one. I think it was, um, uh, I don't remember who, but it wasn't like, it was, it was Shane. It was Shane McMahon. Um, and you know, obviously like in proportion, not really too related to, um, you know, Undertaker. I mean, they had to match in the back end of Taker's career, but you know, obviously and they had like Taker, they had like Jeff, um, you know, Pretty pretty. Then they they kind of like start with some guys you'd recognize in the middle. They like start hitting you with kind of lower key dudes that I guess were just like takers homies that also wrestled back in the day, but not really huge names. They kind of give you some Rikishi's and Booker T's and some WWF uh favorites. And then as they start, you know, we start getting down to the the end of it, and you can kind of you know I think it was very evidence evidential that HBK was coming. Um, and then they had uh, they had Kane finish it off. They had Triple H come before that. They had Kane finish it off, which I feel like you missed. Like I don't know who is necessarily thought of as Taker's like, like uh, I, like like for what Sean is a Brett or like you know what Edge is to Randy Orton, um, Hulk Hogan to Macho Man. I don't know who's Taker's like comparison uh and it's kind of weird because he kind of got big towards the tail end of wwf uh and most of i think his larger in life at least to us the fans kind of came in the early part of wwe where he was obviously quite older than most of those guys um i don't know who would be i guess triple h maybe but like i i don't know i think triple h and taker are both in that lane where they just kind of had so many different rivalries. They got put over so many different times and so many different people that it's kind of hard to pair them with just one person. But I would say that Taker doesn't, off the top of my head, have a guy that necessarily is just, you know, alpha to his omega. But they they get most of the guys right. I thought they, they you know, most of the easy ones, I suppose. Um, Jeff was kind of weird. I, I didn't really, wasn't really the... I don't know. I mean, I, Jeff and Taker did have a big uh, WrestleMania, if I remember correctly, but I felt like that was just a weird one, too. Like, Rey Mysterio would have made more sense to me than Jeff. Um, the one I was looking forward to the most, uh, I guess most people would say Shawn Michaels. I'm looking right here, and, and most people would say Shawn Michaels. So, I guess they did get Shawn Michaels, which, with Shawn and, and, um, and Taker, like, disliking each other so much in real life back in you know, at least Sean's respective prime. I guess it makes a lot of sense. Um, some people would say Kane, and they did get Kane. I think I think Kane and Triple uh, uh, Undertaker are the most linked up. So that again makes sense. Um, so we get to towards the end. I, you know, I really wanted to see Brett. I figured whenever Kane came out, it's going to be the end. But I really wanted to see Brett. Um, who you know, I, I 
I, uh, if you remember the uh, the Dave Chappelle, uh, Charlie Murphy print skit, from what it seems like Brett and Taker, like Taker was Brett's uh, Charlie Murphy for the most part. But unfortunately, Brett did not make it. Um, and, you know, I think Brett's at that stage where he's probably like, you know, I'm factoring COVID into this whole thing. I'm, I would imagine that Brett would have came in the absence of COVID. But, you know, that, that kind of, I don't think Brett could, he's at risk, definitely, I imagine at this point. Um, they got Kevin Nash, which is pretty cool. Uh, didn't get Scott Hall or anybody like that, like the rest of NWO. But, you know, I think Scott Hall is still alive. I'm pretty sure Scott Hall is still alive. Um, and they didn't get they didn't get Batista they didn't get uh Edge cause obviously Edge is hurt they didn't get Randy um so you know missed a couple opportunities but anyway after that I think they hit a uh, I think it was a quick break and then it comes back to Vince they move everybody else out which it's kind of weird they they brought everybody in and like there was no payoff for that and then they flash back and then it's like Vince there doing his little send off and this is probably my first time seeing Vince in like at least six or seven years. Vince is, Vince looks pretty bad. Um, I don't, I don't know how much longer Vince got. He looks like, you can tell like it's clear, like, um, just piecing together his face with like tape at this point. It's, it's not good. It's, it's not good where Vince was at. Um, but, how how old is Vince at this point? It's gonna be like at least like like seventy four, seventy five, seventy five. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. Vince is he's getting up there. So um, Vince does a little send off. Uh, pretty pretty interesting. I mean, there's not many like. I mean, I, I really wasn't there for like some of these major tragedies that occur that Vince had to cover. Uh, like Owen Hart. I mean, I, I listened to that a little bit. Uh, Chris Benoit, I listened to that a little bit, but I didn't really watch most of those live, obviously, because they just happened before my time. Um, or they happened when I was, like, really young, didn't understand the grasp of things like that. Uh, so this is kind of, like, the most emotional, I think, that I have to see, I've had to see Vince. And it it's, uh, you know, you could tell that, in the sense that, you know, a lot of people... A lot of people always, you know, kind of point to who was that guy that, you know, was going to be or wanted to be Vince's right hand. Uh, some people say at one point it was Brett, and then later on it kind of became Triple H. But it seems like from point A to point B, uh, Taker was always like Vince's intermediary. And I think most stories would say that he was an intermediary between the locker room and Vince, the bridge. And I imagine having that, uh, having that guy... At the right hand in command. It's gonna to be tough. It's gonna to be tough for um to for Vince to I mean obviously Vince at this point doesn't do much, but even to opine on what's happening, uh I still imagine that other than Triple H who probably is for better or for worse operating on his own interests at this point, not Vince's. Um probably gonna be weird to have a guy that keeps him in the loop without Taker. Because I mean Taker's the most honest guy, at least agenda field guy i can imagine to to have that role uh so that's you know that's unfortunate but past that vince has a send off uh i think we flashed the commercial one more time and then it's taker's entrance and it's like some weird like uh what, what do you call it a, a kazoo like some weird kazoo slash electronic uh rendition of the beginning of taker's theme like the doom, 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 the piano part of it uh, piano slash organ part of it, and that was awful. I don't know why they did that. That was really bad. I don't, I don't know why. I guess it's supposed to have something to do with the lightning aspect. Like it's supposed to match the lightning I was playing, but uh, that was I didn't like that at all. And it goes on for like another like six or seven minutes. Uh, kind of like it feels like a really true to WrestleMania type of entrance for a Taker, uh, but. It was cool. I mean, they kind of have him like not necessarily float, but like come in on like a elevated platform, which was interesting. Uh, I keep on seeing people mention Kane having to dress up, so it's weird. Everybody comes in kind of like their natural garb, other than maybe Jeff who has like a face paint on. But everybody comes on pretty natural looking, um, and then Kane has to come on with 
the Brother of Destruction fit, with, like even the mask Brother of Destruction fit, which you kind of can't have the outfit without the mask, but he's known as a full garb, and it's like, I don't know. Um, so anyway, we get back to the entrance, get back to the entrance, and he gets there eventually, kind of like the whole little Rick Moreau, um kind of moving around. He, you know, grabs the mic and it's true to Taker um, tradition. Like, it's not a Mark Calloway. It's just, it's just Taker. And I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was cool. That was, that was fun. You know, I, I don't, I, I didn't really follow the whole um, farewell tour too much. So I can't like say I'm tired of you know, the Taker character. And I want to see more of Mark, and I mean Mark is a pretty normal ass dude. So I mean it's like you know how I guess I guess some people want to see like him get like all emotional and kind of break character for this last you know last dance and really make it like memorable. I would like to see that too. I guess that's kind of what I was expecting to see, but obviously we didn't get that. Um, so he kind of talks for like three or four minutes and like he. Does the whole like, uh, you know the, he does like the, his, like the end of his speech is like, basically like the rest in peace, but he's just like Undertaker, rest in peace, Undertaker, or Undertaker character, rest in peace. You know the how he does it, um, he does the whole, you know, slit uh neck thing, and he goes down on his knee, and the lighting fits what it usually would occur. It, it, usually when he does this, it's like. He teleports, where right? he just sends some black and teleports, which I thought that would have been a cool send off. But he does it, and then like a hologram, not like like a Tupac hologram where it's like movable, but a brief like standstill hologram of Paul Bearer comes in and he's like holding the urn, and then Taker is doing the you know little on one knee shit he does. Um, his eyes flash to the back of his head, and it, it becomes awkward because he does that, and then he kind of just kneels down for like about five or six more minutes and he just walks out after that um and like when he gets to the uh the titan tron entrance and he does the you know fist in the air and all that shit it's like it felt like it felt like they had this plan that obviously you know this probably has been in the works for about a full year and a half i'd imagine for quite a while I and mean, take had no intention of wrestling in his current condition so it's going to be, I guess, weird, whatever they had to do, regardless, because usually you would send off somebody of Taker's caliber with a match. But I think Taker has said multiple times he didn't intend on wrestling in his current condition, where if he couldn't put on a great match, and with it already being past nine, I, I think most people figured, nine central time, that there wasn't really much of a chance of a match happening. So what they did seems to like be some kind of brief, like not brief, but some kind of, definitely wasn't brief, but some kind of mess between a real, like, summarize and just quick send off like you would expect with like take her like shorten to the point and then something sappy and drawn out and the the mitts didn't really work to me like we got to a point where he's walking back and like the whole walking back was like four minutes in of itself so i was like fuck um it just it did you could tell like and the reason why i say this had to be put together for quite a while is because you can tell, like, there was a lot of pauses for real-ass feedback. Like, him doing the Paul Bearer, that would have been a big over um, for the crowd. The crowd would have loved it. Uh, and then he does it, and then, like, he's just sitting there for a while, like I said, and then it flashes the dark. And I guess the crowd would maybe expect, like, oh, he's going to do a fade back black thing. And maybe he was supposed to come back. Uh, it's supposed to, like, you know, go back, lights come back on. It was like, oh, he's still there. I don't know. But, um, you, you can tell that like, parts of that was for, like, crowd, uh, in, involvement, and they didn't really seem to edit that too much for what it actually was, what they said to deal with. So, I would say what made it awkward, and I think the only way to describe it is just awkward and kind of jumbled, um, was that they just didn't have a crowd to work with, and obviously, you know, they had a well, it's pretty much been a year to prepare for that. I mean, they've been doing these um, ISO arenas for 
the better part of like nine, ten months now. Or, or no, it closed down for quite a while. So like like seven months. Like they had like a couple months where they had people there, you know. But for the most part, like seven months, no people. So they should have been like ready for this, in my opinion. But I don't know. Um, how long have I going for this one? Fifteen minutes. Let's get this over with. I thought it was decent. I thought it was okay. Uh, I really wish Brett would have been there. Uh, I really wish they would have found a better blend between getting to the point and giving him moments to speak. I wish they would actually have had him speak, like, not talk about his character, not talk about, you know, I've been this character for so long, but actually give him time to, I don't know, just emote. <laughs> Honestly, just emote. I mean... Someone made a good point that it seems like the Undertaker character himself isn't really, like, dead, dead, even though, you know, Mark sent it off. Because they, they didn't really... I mean, this was supposed to be a sit off for the Undertaker. It didn't really feel like a send off for Mark. Like, Mark himself, I feel like is supposed to be the person of interest here. It's supposed to be the person that got a real time to, to you know, cut the, the ish and, and actually just talk, but... Mark didn't really, Mark didn't get anything here, in my opinion. Mark just kind of passed on the taker. Um, you know what would have been cool? They just like had a uh, a casket roll in. And they, he puts the taker garb in there, and it really feels official. But as it is, he didn't take the hat off or anything. He just kind of walked off with the garb, and I don't, I don't know. I don't think they'll bring taker back for real. But it felt like they just kind of commemorated the figure more than they did the person behind the figure which from what i understand about mark calloway that probably is how he would have wanted it but it, it it felt like a big a big like bunch of nothing and they, I, to be honest with you a bit a big bunch of nothing in the grand scheme of things kind of came and it went um so yeah um if you didn't watch survivor series i I mean, hopefully you watched it, before, at least watch this event before coming here. I was just made uh, spoilers, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know who what this. Would, they didn't even have Sting. I'm in on that. They didn't have Sting. They did. <laughs> they didn't have Boogeyman just for the fun of it. They didn't have Stinger. They didn't have Bret Hart. They. It. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like much was done in the grand scheme of things that's all i'm gonna say i'll give it like i'll give the event itself like a five out of ten maybe four out of ten you know it came in and went